fake. So, money. Carlton Banks. Yes, sir. We got some news today, dude. What we get? What this we, is wild, and, I, and I'm trying to see this, and I and so far, it's amazing to me. If you haven't realized yet, the NFL schedule is now out. Yes. Now that's what I'm talking about. The funny part about it. Any highlights? Yeah. Well, the big two big things I'm noticing right off the bat. There's a Thursday night game every, every week. Every week. I know. Except for yeah, the week last week. Yeah. You hear about that? And then there are no buys. No buys. I'm, I'm, not, I'm looking at Dallas' schedule now. Of course, I'm paying close attention to it. Giants, Sad. Seattle, Tampa Bay, Chicago, Baltimore, Carolina, Giants, Atlanta. Nothing in here says the word buy yet. Wow. When I do mean, we beat up on the Cowboys? We're going to tear into the Redskins on November 22nd. And then again on December 30th. So what, your New Year's is going to be horrible, just like your Thanksgiving Day is going what, to be horrible. When do the world champion Super Bowl defenders, New York football giants, beat Did you the say defenders? You know, we're going to take – when, when do we beat the Cowboys? We're going to ruin the Giants' um, ring ceremony, first game of the season, September what? 5th, the first Wednesday game in quite some time. And then we play them again uh, October 28th. Oh, man, it's quick, concise. Yeah. So I, I don't know how I feel about them playing so quickly. I don't know either. I mean, I liked it better when we got, you know, the build up to the beat down of the Cowboys where we played them later on in the season, November, December games, as opposed to the first game of the season. And then again, in mid October, I'll call them back. So I don't know how I feel about that. that just well, makes, it feels great to me to ruin your ring ceremony. Well, so, and that's what we plan on doing. Well, at least when we have our annual <laughs> Cowboys Giants games at the crib, how we do every single year. Yeah, it'll still be somewhat warm out. It'll we'll be warm. We can it'll be nice. Ball in the backyard. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, I won't get an ass cramp again. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, you want to tell the ass cramp story? No, I want to tell that. Ass cramp too. Back a little funny. Oh, he was laughing. The ass cramp story. Well, I give you the short. Anytime you get, anytime you start grabbing your ass, you know. The short version is Carlton Banks and Marcus J were in the backyard. Carlton Banks says to Marcus J, "Go on." So he Marcus, went long, all right. Marcus J goes long, <laughs> and in mid stride, my right ass cheek cramped up. And I don't know if you've ever had an ass cramp, but I'm going to tell you, it does some terrible things to your stride. And I'm not about to massage your ass and get that cramp well, out of it. You know no, that? I'm really, Ooh, really, really glad. Too much I'm glad information. that you won't be doing that. I would much prefer that Mrs. J took care of those I movies. would, too. Uh, which she probably rolled her eyes at me. I ain't rubbing your asses, but, you know, that's another conversation for another day. Hey, look. So, any other highlights in the schedule? Well, I mean, Dallas has four primetime games. Can we games. get off of Dallas? Um, no, we can't Can get, we off, get of off of Dallas. Can we get off of Dallas? No. How about this for some nice information? I'm going to tell you this much. Hold on. Before you get get in there, hey, Grizzly, I know you're listening. Oh, yeah. But I see December 16th, I'm going to be at your house just so I can mess with you. At 4.15, we're going to be busting that. All day, every day, baby. No, December 16th. Go ahead and say ass. All right, say I can ass. say it. We We're going to be busting that ass on December 16th, Jay. Ass. The Steelers ass. will lose. You hear me? All those Steelers fans that are on the air with us, y'all suck. Ben Roethlisberger will probably be in jail again by that time. <laughs> wow. All right. I'm going to be like Skip Bayless and call him out. But uh, speaking, of, speaking of Grizzly and his Steelers, Grizzly and his Steelers will be visiting Denver for Peyton Manning's first game as a member of the Denver Broncos in one of four prime, prime time games in the league's kickoff week of September 5th through 10th. Yeah. So that ought to be pretty interesting to see. You, you know, you know that, Peyton Manning is going to get tested versus a team that he should be pretty familiar with from his time in Indianapolis. And they're going to be upset. They're going to be mad because of how Tebow treated them last season. And then because of the fuel Skip Bayless just gave, um, I can't think of the cornerback's name the other day on um, – the four letter network. You you watch Skip Bayless. Dude, I'm just saying somebody's gonna punch Skip Bayless in the mouth. You know what else I want to get into, and this will be the last thing that we get into in the sports roundup because we do need to get to K Dub in the NBA chat. A zero four 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 seven zero six zero one is the number to dial. Uh I'm not big on college football, not really my thing. I much rather see these cats when they make it to the National Football League. But what I want to bring up, and you guys will probably be more versed on this story than I am, let's talk a little bit about the coach that got busted on his motorcycle. Man, he's an idiot. Let, well, let's talk a little bit about the coach that got busted on the motorcycle with his girlfriend, Carl Branks. Why don't you tell the listeners about it, and then we'll talk about it. My man has already what's his been name? fired. What's his name and what's his college? Bobby Petrino, Arkansas. University of Arkansas. Okay. What, yeah. what, what, he, what happened? He, he's an idiot. All right. First of all, he's already been known to cheat on his wife. That's one thing. So you got that against them. 
Then he decides, you know what, I'm going to plan on doing it again. But this time, I'm going to have a young lady who is like a sports manager or team manager or something from the team, 25, and they're going to get in a motorcycle accident. And Ruben's over here shaking his head. What you shaking let's, your head about? Let's start from the beginning. All right, go ahead and start from the beginning, Ruben. First of all, Patrina is, is crazy. Yeah. You never, ever, ever plant where you, you sit at. How you know? First of all, this young lady that he was messing with, the young lady he was messing with, he hired her to work directly for him. They had been in, involved for quite a number of, t- number of months. They said extended period of time. And on top of that, before she got with Bobby Petrino, she was engaged to the men's swimming coach. Wow. So, she went from one coach to another coach. She used she worked for like the the um yeah, the people who raise money. Right. Then he hired her to work directly for him so he could do his illicit activities with her there so it didn't seem weird that she was hanging around him. And then on top of all that, to make it worse, this dude goes on a bike ride with the mistress after he spent the beginning of the day with his wife and then tried to ask the state policeman to not put the girl in the report then to top it all off with a cherry on top they gave him two chances to come clean, to come clean and he chose not to mm-hmm. so there was this clause in his contract that basically said if you do anything Stupid. detrimental to the school to the pop to the um what you call the school the reputation school we can fire you and not pay you a whole bunch of money and they fired him and they're not gonna pay him a whole bunch of money that's right, that's, that's like 28 million dollars and probably his wife and his family wow even though they said they're working on getting it together yeah she's just working for the time to divorce you wow have a great day i wanted to get that one out there because that story broke right after we went off of the air i know we said that we would go on to a break but one one more quick story that I do want to get into. We're going to kind of backtrack to baseball a little bit. This past Sunday was the uh, 65th anniversary of Jackie Robinson breaking in to Major League Baseball, breaking the color barrier, uh, so to speak. And every single player in Major League Baseball wore the number 42, which has been retired amongst baseball since 1997. Anybody who wore that number as of that day uh, was allowed to keep it, but it has been retired. And of course, everybody wore that number uh, to, of course, salute and support uh, the memory of Jackie Robinson. Just want to throw a couple of quick numbers out at you guys and then have y'all comment before we go to break. Right now, well, before I say right now, I'll say in 1947, when Jackie Robinson broke in, we know that he was the first. 1959. You had 17% of Major League Baseball were black. That number peaked in 1975. They got as high as 27%. 27% of the Major League Baseball players in 1975 were black. The number that came out for 2012 was a little over 8%. 8%, I A little that. over 8%. Mm-hmm. So my question to you guys is this. I have my own opinions about this, but I want to hear what you guys have to say. What would you say is the reason that we go basically in about 37 years from 27% down to 8% when you look around at athletics, you would think that young black men are just as, uh, you know, They're just as athletic as they were 37 years ago. Why aren't they playing basketball? Big Rube, start with you. The hardest thing to do in the world is to hit a 95 miles per hour fastball. That is the hardest thing to do. Now, as a young black man myself, I can't hit it. However, I can hit other people, and I can sometimes shoot shoot a basketball, or I can run. Baseball is a lot of knowledge 
a lot of learning and to be perfectly honest with you if that's not something you love at the beginning you're never going to just love baseball you're either going to oh that's okay or it's too slow I can't take it and I think I don't think it's a situation where we can't I think it's a situation that there are other things that I can do without having to sit in think and learn and stuff like that and I can make way more money doing other stuff than baseball is it really that simple for you is that all yeah it is Carlton Banks you got any opinion on it um you know I look at it like this there I played little league baseball and yeah Ruben a 95 mile power baseball is hard to hit my problem was I couldn't see the ball I, I had a vision problem however my twin bro my twin brother he plays semi pro baseball so you know we have the athletes there it's just a desire if you want to continue playing that sport there are black athletes who you do see at the major division one schools the division two schools even and division three schools they have college baseball programs but I don't think a lot of scouts get to see those other players and if there's no feeder system going to the school then you know what can you do I think a big part of it has to do with the fact that you just look around your inner city neighborhoods and there just aren't places for kids to go and play baseball. That's and, a big thing right and there. Then, and then you also look around and see, you know, a lot of those kids are playing basketball. And you can play basketball with one kid and one rock, basically. You know, and how, how much does basketball cost? I don't know, $15, $20 basketball. Whereas with baseball, you got to get a bat and then you got to get balls and then you got to get your homies and then you need to get a field and, and all of those kinds of things. And if you look around the inner cities, they're not building baseball fields like they may have done years ago. And so, and then if you look around the schools, a lot of schools don't have baseball teams for the same reason that I mentioned. There might not be the money out there that there would have been uh, in years past. So I think that might be part of it. How you fix that? Hey, look, I don't, I, I don't know. I know I did see uh, right across the street from where Ebbets Field was in New York, which is where Jackie Robinson played for the Dodgers. Of course, that place is no longer there, but there's a school across the street that's been named after Jackie, and they just had their own baseball team developed, and those kids are learning the game. They're learning um, the skills, and they've had donations from benefactors who have given money so that they can learn the sport that, you know, Jackie, of course, inspired in some of those kids. So I, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I just wanted to kind of put it out there and see what you guys thought. Ain't no has to happen. Marcus J, 804 We're going to go ahead and get into a break. Ain't no has to happen. Marcus J, when we come back, we'll be, we'll be talking to K-Dub. We'll be talking National Basketball Association. You know, I asked that, but Marcus J. Be back in a minute. <laughs> 